show you how to solve linear inequalities. So linear inequalities is very similar to solving linear equations, except you need to remember two important things. Instead of the value of the unknown letter, for example, x, taking one single value, when we're solving inequalities, it will take a range of values. The other important thing you need to remember when you're solving linear inequalities is that sometimes that symbol there, the greater than or less than symbol, it turns around the other way. It only turns around, flips the other way around, if you find yourself timesing or dividing this inequality by a negative number. So, hopefully you already know what these symbols mean. This one means greater than, this one is less than, this one is greater than or equal to, because there's this dash line there, and this one means less than or equal to. So, let's get going and have a go at these questions. So, just like when you're solving equations, you need to move everything away from the x value until x is by itself. So, you need to reverse the operations. So, the opposite of adding 4 is to subtract 4. And if you subtract 4 on the left-hand side, you have to do the same on the right-hand side of this sign here. So, you're subtracting 4 on both sides of the inequality to keep it balanced. So, on the left-hand side, well, 4 take 4 is just 0. So, I'm left with 5x. And on the right-hand side, 39 minus 4 gives me 35. Now, I need to get rid of this 5. The opposite of multiplying by 5 is to divide by 5. So, we have to divide by 5. Remember to do the same thing on both sides of the inequality. Here, we've got 5 divided by 5, which is just 1. So, I'm left with 1x. And on the right-hand side, 35 divided by 5 is 7. So we've already solved our inequality. So it was just like solving a linear equation. And this means x is smaller than or equal, um, just smaller than 7 or less than 7. Remember, there's no equal sign here. So it's just less than. So x, if it was an integer, for example, so a whole number, it could be equal to 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and so on. Okay, so x takes the range of values which are all smaller than the number 7. So, on to the next one. The same idea, we need to reverse the operations. So the opposite of taking away 5 is to add 5. So I need to add 5 to both sides of my inequality to keep it balanced. Here, they just cancel because minus 5 plus 5 is 0. So I'm left with 4x. And the sign just stays as it is. Okay, And 19 plus 5 is 24. So the last step in this one is to divide by 4 on both sides because that's the opposite of multiplying by 4. This side just cancels because 4 divided by 4 is 1, so we're left with 1x. And on the right-hand side... 24 divided by 4 is 6. So we've solved this inequality as well. So this time it means x is less than or equal to 6. Remember this sign here means less than or equal to because there's that line there as well. So it could be equal to 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, etc. Okay, so notice how for the moment the sign didn't flip round the other way. So it's just like solving equations, solving linear equations. Right then, on to the next one. So, same as before, I'm going to reverse the operations. I'm going to get rid of everything on the left-hand side until x is by itself. So I'm going to start by subtracting 1 on both sides. So here, the 1 minus 1, well, that just disappears to 0. And I'm left with negative 2x. Don't forget to write down that negative. On the right-hand side, 3 take away 1 is 2. Now here, this is what I was talking about earlier. We need to divide by negative 2. So remember I said at the beginning of the video, whenever you find yourself timesing or dividing by a negative number, like in this one, so we have to watch out in this question, you need to flip that sign round the other way. So here, minus 2 divided by divided by minus 2 is just 1, so we're left with 1x. Then the symbol turns around. And 2 divided by minus 2 is minus 1. So we have solved the inequality. So x is less than negative 1, so it could be minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, 
etc. Okay, so there's an example of when the sign switches when you're timesing or dividing by a negative number. All right, I think we need to make these a little bit harder now. So in this one, it looks a little bit different because we have x terms on both sides of the inequality sign. So just like when you're solving linear equations, you need to put x's on one side, numbers on the other. It doesn't matter which way around you move the x values, you'll get the correct answer whichever way you do. But I would suggest moving the x, the smaller x, so the 3x, rather than the bigger x, 8x, because then you will keep the x values positive and it's just a little bit easier to work with that way. So I'm going to put x values on the left hand side, which means I need to put numbers on the right hand side. And just like when you're solving equations, when the terms move across this sign, they change sign. So if something used to be positive, it becomes negative and vice versa. So let's write down what happens when we move those terms. So the 8x hasn't moved, that one's still there. This positive 3x changes to a negative 3x because it's moving. Here we've got the sign, this one didn't move, so this stays the same. And then we've got a positive 4 changing to a negative 4. Now let's work that out. 8x minus 3x is 5x. And on the right hand side, minus 31 minus 4 is minus 35. So my final step is the opposite of multiplying by 5, it's dividing by 5. So we're just dividing by positive 5, so the sign doesn't turn around. Okay, so x is smaller than, well, this comes to negative 7. So if x is less than negative 7, it means it could be negative 8, negative 9, negative 10, and so on. But it's not equal to. All right, now, again, looking a little bit different. This time we've got a fraction. So we need to get rid of this fraction. Remember, when you see this line, it means divide. So the opposite of dividing by 8 is to multiply by 8. And remember, just like always, you have to do the same thing to both sides of the equation. So the left-hand side just cancels. So wherever you do the opposite, that just cancels. And I'm left with x minus 1, which was the numerator. Then we've got our inequality sign. And on the right-hand side, you have to be careful and remember to multiply everything by 8. Not just the 1, but both terms. So 1 multiplied by 8 is 8, and minus x multiplied by 8 is minus 8x. So now it's looking a little bit like the one up here. We've got x terms on both sides of the equations. So I'm going to move the small term of x, like in the last one, so this one. I'm going to move that over to the left-hand side, which means I want numbers on the right-hand side. So I'm going to move that minus 1 to the right. Remember, they change sign, the ones that are moving. So the x stays there. This changes to a plus. Then we've got our sign. This didn't move, so this is the same. But this one is changing to a plus. And now I'm going to work that out. So 1x plus 8x is 9x. On the right-hand side, this gives me 9. And the final step is to divide by 9. So x is less than or equal to 9 divided by 9, which is 1. So if x is smaller than or equal to 1, x could be 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, and so on. Okay, hopefully those ones weren't too difficult uh, because I'm about to make them even harder. Okay, so I might have lied just a little bit. I said I was going to make them harder, but the first one here is actually not that hard. So here I can see x is being multiplied by 3. Well, the opposite of multiplying by 3 is to divide by 3. Remember, you need to do the same thing throughout the inequality or the equation if you're solving an equation. So you're going to divide everything in that inequality by 3. So here, well, they just cancel. 3 divided by 3 just leaves me with 1x. On the right hand side, 12 divided by 3, well that's 4. And on the left hand side, minus 9 divided by 3 is minus 3. So this time, x is less than 4, 
but at the same time it has to be greater than or equal to negative 3. So if we're thinking about whole numbers, it means x could take the value of minus 3, minus 2, so on, all the way up to the number 3, because it says it needs to be less than 4, so you're not allowed to include that value. Now, this one does look a little bit harder. Remember earlier we needed to get rid of the fraction? Well, we have to do the same thing here, except we're going to get rid of two fractions at once. So I'm going to be multiplying by 5 to get rid of that one, and I'm going to be multiplying by 2 to get rid of that fraction. But remember, when you multiply by 5, you have to multiply by 5 on both sides of the equation, which means we need to multiply that numerator by 5 as well. So 5 multiplied by x gives me 5x. 5 multiplied by 3 gives me positive 15. And the same with the 2. If I times by 2 over here, I have to do the same on the left-hand side of my inequality 2. So 2 multiplied by x is 2x. And 2 multiplied by negative 3 is negative 6. So you're just multiplying the left-hand side with this number and the right-hand side with this number. And now it's like those examples from earlier, when you've got x terms on both sides of the inequality sign. So we need to move x's to one side, numbers to the other. So remember I advised you to move the smaller term of x just to keep it a bit easier. So I'm going to move this 2x over to the right, which means I want numbers on the left. So that leaves me with, well the negative 6 stays the same. This one's moving, so it changes to negative 15. Then I've got my sign. This didn't move, so that stays the same as well. But this positive 2x changes to a negative 2x. And now I can work that out. So minus 6 take away 15 is negative 21. And on the right hand side I've got 3x. So my final step is to divide everything by 3. So on the left hand side I've got negative 7. And then on the right hand side 3x divided by 3 is just 1 because they cancel each other out. Okay, so it was actually just the first step here that looked a bit complicated, but afterwards it was just like the ones from earlier. So in this one, x is smaller than or equal to minus 7, so x could be negative 7 or negative 8, negative 9, all the ones that are smaller. Okay, so here we've got a little bit of a challenge question to finish. So I need to solve this inequality. Well, notice how, again, we've got two inequality signs, but we've also got x's in more than one place. We've got x's here, and also there's one over here. So when that happens, what you need to do is split that inequality up into two sections. So to start with, I'm just going to look at the left-hand side. So I'm going to solve that inequality down there. So I'm just going to rewrite it so it looks a little bit clearer. And I'm going to solve. So I need to divide by 2 on both sides. So 2 divided by 2 leaves, leaves me with 1x over here. And on the left hand side I have 5. So that means x is greater than or equal to 5. So we've solved half of the inequality. Now we need to look at the other side. So I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to draw a circle around that part. And I'm going to rewrite this section of the inequality out down here. And again, you're just solving the inequality, so you need to get x's on one side, numbers on the other. Remember to try and move the smaller x term, which would be this one. So when that x moves to the other side, it turns to a negative. So I've got 2x minus x, and the positive 9 is still positive. Now calculate. 2x minus x is 1x. And so x is less than or equal to 9. So we know that x is greater than or equal to 5, but it's also less than or equal to 9. So it could take the values of 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So if I want to write those out as just one inequality, we can do it like this. So I'm going to write x. I know that it's greater than or equal to 5, so I'm going to write that part down first. And then on this side, it must also be less than or equal to 9, so I'm going to add in the 9. So that's just the same thing, it's just a summary, if you like, of these two inequalities. So there we go, that's the solution for the last example. 
So I hope you understand now the questions on solving inequalities. Remember just that one difference between solving linear equations and solving inequalities. If you ever find yourself timesing or dividing the, uh, the inequality with a negative number, then that sign would turn around the other way. But as you've seen with my examples, that doesn't occur that often. I think I only did one example where that was the case. But just remember that important point. So bye-bye uh, for me.